A Ghatak platoon of a forward deployed infantry unit practicing slithering operations from an ALH in eastern Arunachal Pradesh. The objective? To be prepared for quick insertion close to the border with China when the eventuality arises. Almost every infantry unit in this sector now has a small force ready to carry out this task. The varied terrain in Arunachal Pradesh also requires troops to be adept in rock climbing and rappling. Constant training is the only way to master the skill as these soldiers are doing. But basic tactics and skills apart, the Indian Army is now inducting more and more advanced technology in support of the foot soldier guarding the frontier in this remote, inaccessible area. Thanks to improved communication facilities, the leader of a long-range patrol can now talk to higher headquarters in real time, as this company commander is doing with his GOC sitting in his operations room hundreds of kilometers away and send visuals of the terrain from the ground when required. All right. Thank you, this would have been unthinkable some years ago. Technology induction has improved surveillance and reconnaissance too. From my location, I can easily observe deep into the enemy territory up to a depth of 15 kilometers using the surveillance equipments deployed here. That allows me to observe the moving targets and scan and track them uh, during both day and night. This allows me to direct the artillery fire of the guns of my regiment accurately and on the real-time basis. This is uh, the waypoint of long-range patrol number two, right. which started from the present location. Technology apart, there is a greater emphasis on improving infrastructure closer to the border. Better habitats, broader roads, building key bridges, and even better defenses. These concrete underground communication trenches, not very far from the LAC, symbolizes the push for better facilities. As you have seen the integrated defended locality, all the fighting bunkers are on the forward slope of this sledge and all the living and the Adam shelters are on the river slope. And all these bunkers are interconnected with the communication trench over which the OHPs will come up and it will be a tunnel type defense which will not expose the individuals and will further enhance the defensibility of this sector. This area in the Walong sector was in fact witness to some of the fiercest fighting in 1962. Chinese apparently gave the name Tiger's Mouth to this area, this entire area that you see where uh, there was one fierce counter-attack by the Indian forces in this sector. Chinese lost uh, in one battle about 200 soldiers and in another battle about 600 soldiers. Therefore, this is the sector where the Chinese are a little wary of if they have any designs on uh, the Indian side uh, in this sector of uh, what is called the rest of Arunachal Pradesh in the Indian Army parlance. Since then, much water has flown down the Lohit. Now, the ground soldier is far better equipped and looked after. Units practice different maneuvers relentlessly. We witness a battalion assault exercise near Dong village. Mountain warfare demands extreme fitness as well as agility of mind and support of artillery firepower. Now available a plenty in the sector from the 120mm mortar to the latest M777 ultralight howitzer, not to forget the ever-reliable Bofors. Events of Ladakh in 2020 have hastened the pace of new inductions and propelled new infrastructure projects in the Northeast. For the first time in many decades, the Indian Army has moved much closer to the line of actual control with China in eastern Arunachal Pradesh. I am at the last post in the eastern Arunachal sector of the line of actual control or the McMahon line. A post which gives Indian Army the ability to see deep into the Chinese territory across the LAC and observe any movement that the PLA or other forces might be making on the other side. This is a posture which has been adopted after the recent happenings between India and China. 
In eastern Arunachal Pradesh with Rohit Pandita and Shaurya Lenka, Nitin Gokhale for Strat News Global.